Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu, and welcome back to another episode of Spoiler Sunday. So Spoiler Sunday is uh, the time of the week where I take a look at everything that was revealed uh, over this past week, and oh boy, we got a lot of uh, new cards to be talking about. Not only from the new starter decks, but new promos and more spoilers from BT08. So I do apologize if uh, these are going to be jumbled. It's just uh, a little bit hard to keep track of everything because there was just a lot revealed. So bear with me as we go over everything. So first up, we have Bastimon. So this is a new version of Bastimon. Bastimon was previously in blue and now she made the transition to purple with a nice on playability where we get to... Uh, delete one of the opponent's level 3 Digimon. So this is actually a pretty decent card considering it is a purple with an on play ability. That's a level 5 which we don't see a whole lot and it helps us enable our Jogress and gain some benefit. So the way Jogress wants to work is we need to have the two color Digimon on the field at the same time. So there's no better cards to gain advantage from just raw playing than with the on play ability and purple had a distinct lack of that let alone good ones that they could actually use and the fact that this is a removal card also is very very nice because there is just a lot of low level Digimon that are just acting very 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 strong and prominent and this could help delete some of those Digimon. So I really do like what this card is doing as a result. Next up, we have Darkness Wave. So Darkness Wave is another card uh, where it's a one-costed option, so if you want to have it synergize it with uh, Drachmon, then it's another card to do that, and it has this nice main ability where we get to trash uh, the top three cards of our deck. Then if we have a yellow Digimon in play, we get to return one yellow or purple Digimon from our trash to our hand. And then its security ability is just activating its main ability. I think this is an okay card. It's not super amazing, but it is just a cheap way of trying to fill up your trash and then if something that you want is in your trash then it has the ability to help put it back into your hand. Granted it only is selecting yellow or purple Digimon but there's just a lot of yellow and purple synergy already in the game on top of uh, what's coming out with the starter deck on top of what could potentially be in BT08. So there's just a lot that this card can do and even though I think it's just an okay card it's uh, still something to play around with. Next up, we have Ghostmon. So Ghostmon is a pretty decent Digimon. It has the nice ability where during the opponent's turn, while we have a yellow Digimon in play, this gains the blocker ability. We kind of saw something previously to this uh, in the promo Gatomon, where we need to have a purple Digimon in play in order for this to gain the blocker ability. So it's no shock that we have it here, and it looks like uh, this is going to be the starter deck's way of introducing a new set of blockers to use for various different purposes. So you don't necessarily have to use this as a blocker. It doesn't have the downside of not being able to attack or reduce reducing your memory when you do swing, so it's a pretty flexible card, and it's a blocker on a rookie, so I do think this card is pretty decent. I don't know exactly if this is going to be seen in the long run, because there is just a lot of low-level removal and a lot of removal on Digimon with 5,000 DP or less, so this could see play, but regardless, this is just the starter deck's way of introducing a new set of blockers. Next, uh, we have Tsukaiban. So this is a pretty decent Digimon. He could Digivolve off of it yellow or purple, which is already pretty good because it allows you to use basically whatever egg you want and transition into whatever color you want out of the two on top of all of the other transition Digimon we have already. And then on top of that, he has the on play ability where we get to reveal the top of three cards of our deck. And then we get to add one Digimon with Angel, Archangel, or Fallen Angel in its trait among them into our hand and then the rest go into the bottom in any order. So this is just another digger card for the angels, archangels, and fallen angels. So it's just trying to help you dig for your pieces so that way you could digivolve and jogress and be able to play your deck to its utmost potential. So I think this is a pretty good card overall, but it also has some synergy outside of the Mastimon deck just because it is interacting with angels, archangels, and fallen angels. 
Next, we have Witchmon. So Witchmon is another pretty decent Digimon because it is a security Digimon. So this does have the security ability where after the security battle, then this card gets to be played for free, which we've seen in the past to be very, very powerful. I don't know if Purple could actually utilize this ability to the utmost potential, but it's still a good ability to have it nonetheless, especially since it has the nice on play ability to pair with it, where we get to return one level five or lower Purple Digimon from our trash to our hand. So this is a pretty decent ability at just uh, recovering certain cards that we want in order to make some very powerful plays possible, and uh, I do think that this is a pretty decent security Digimon to be running overall, not only just for the starter deck, just because it, it helps uh, you grab your pieces back, but for other decks as well, just because of the security ability being very, very powerful. Next, uh, we have Unomon. So Unomon is going to be the supporting mega for the Mastimon starter deck, and this card is looking to be pretty okay. It's a little underwhelming, but it's still a decent card in her own right. She does have some pretty okay stats where she has a play cost of 11, which is a little bit on the lower side, which isn't bad. And then she has 11,000 DP, and she could digivolve off of uh, a yellow level 5 or a purple level 5 for 3. So she's pretty decent just because of all of those elements. And then on top of that, she has two abilities of her own. Her first is the retaliation ability, so that's pretty obnoxious, making her a little bit not necessarily resilient, but annoying to try to attack into. So you're going to have to find alternate ways of deleting her unless you want to attack into her and delete both Digimon. So that's just something to keep in mind. And then on top of that, she has a when Digivolving ability where you get to trash the top three cards of your deck, then return one Digimon card from your trash to your hand. So it's just another way to self mill and then grab back the pieces that you want that is in your trash. So this is targeting any Digimon, so it doesn't even have to be color specific. And uh, that's just what's making her pretty decent because there's just a lot of combo play that she could enable and set up. Next up, we have Gamamon. So this is like, what, the third time we've seen Gamamon since he was uh, first uh, announced uh, when Ghost Games was announced, and I'm totally loving it. So uh, we had two promo versions of Gamamon before, and now we have a Gamamon coming out in BT08. So this card is actually looking to be pretty decent considering he has uh, your average rookie stats with a native ability and an inheritable ability. Usually when they do have a native and an inheritable, they do take a stat decrease, so the fact that he doesn't have that makes him actually pretty decent. But on top of that, both of his effects are very, very good effects on a generic level. So he has a uh, native ability where during your turn, once per turn, when you play a red tamer, then you get to draw a card. So that's really, really important because red has some pretty solid tamers that they want to be using. And the fact that Gamamon is going to be rewarding you for playing those tamers by allowing you to draw a card is really good, especially since red it doesn't necessarily have the best card draw in the game. It is getting a little bit better each set, but the fact that they still have a hard time drawing cards uh, makes this card really, really good because you have ways of playing your tamers for free and uh, you have uh, lots of good tamers that you want to be playing. And then on top of that, he also has a nice inheritable ability where it's a when attacking ability. If this Digimon has 6,000 or more DP, then you get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon with 3,000 DP or less. So it's not very hard to have Digimon with 6,000 DP or more. Heck, half the level 4s that, that you generally want to be playing anyway are already going to have 6,000 DP or could DP boost themselves uh, in some way, shape, or form. So hitting that threshold isn't very hard and the reward is basically deleting one of the opponent's level 3 Digimon. It could even hit some level 4 Digimon because it's DP based, but I digress and it's just looking to be a pretty decent card to use all around. There's already tons of uh, ways that we could use this card and tons of decks this card can go into on top of the new ones that are going to be forming inside of BT08, so I'm excited to see what the rest of the set has to offer in store for Gamamon. Next up, we have a new Hawkmon. So this Hawkmon is acting similar to uh, the Tsukaimon that we saw from the starter deck, where it could digivolve off of uh, two different colors. So it allows you to use either red eggs or yellow eggs. It doesn't necessarily matter, just whatever you feel like is best with the deck that you're going to be building. And he has the on play ability where he's acting as a digger card, similar to Tsukaimon, but the digging ability is a little bit different where it's an on play. You get to reveal the top four cards of your deck and then add 
uh, one two color card from among them into your hand and then the rest go to the bottom. So he's specifically looking for two color cards and the intended synergy is to use him with a whole bunch of armor evolutions and geogresses. So that's kind of the natural line of progression that he wants you to take and uh, the uh, armor evolutions and geogresses that he could be interacting with are already pretty decent. Next, we have Raidramon. So Raidramon is an armor evolution Digimon, and this card is pretty decent. He has the, the uh, Digivolution requirement of Digivolving for three on top of a green, which is a little bit expensive, but you could uh, reduce that uh, by Digivolving him on top of a Vmon card specifically for two. So that's kind of like the whole balancing act because two color Digimon can be very, very powerful because they do count as both colors. So uh, the fact that he either only evolves off of green or a Vmon is a uh, kind of like their whole balancing act and he has the armor release ability which the armor release ability states that when this digimon would be deleted you may trash uh, the top card of this digimon to prevent the digimon from being deleted so it's almost like an on delete effect uh, where you basically just de digivolve one and that's pretty interesting because it allows you to uh, push some early game aggression and then uh, when he gets deleted then you get to reduce him back to a vmon and then you could digivolve on top of that vmon again to try to push for more aggression or swap forms if you want into a different armor Digimon. So I really don't hate this armor release ability because it does act as some protection and give the Digimon extra resilience, which a lot of Digimon are lacking in order to be super playable because there is just a lot of removal floating around in the game. And then on top of that, he also has a when Digivolving ability where we get to suspend one of the opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon, which is just a very green thing to do, and a lot of these uh, two-color Digimon or Jagras Digimon like to take aspects off of uh, both colors. So I think this is a pretty decent card to be using all around, and we could use this uh, with uh, some other two-color cards to be able to form some spicy and interesting decks. So I think just off of the green-blue synergy alone makes this card really, really good because he could interact with a lot of the Imperial German stuff because we're already playing Vmon. So there's just a lot that this card can do uh, based on uh, what little we have. Next, uh, we have Shurimon. So Shurimon is another armor evolution, and it does have the uh, Digivolution requirements of Digivolving for three on top of green, which again is a little bit expensive for a level four, but it, it could Digivolve for two on top of any Hawkmon. So that's what's making this card pretty decent, is you do have that flexibility on how you could evolve it. It also has the armor release ability, and on top of that, it has its own uh, when Digivolving ability, where one of the opponent's Digimon with block can't block until the end of the opponent's next turn. So that's actually really, really powerful just because uh, not being able to have it, the opponent's blockers block just allows you to aggress really easily. And like I stated before with the armor release ability, even if this Digimon dies in the security, then it, it just it basically de digivolves back into a Hawkmon. So that way we could de digivolve into something else later to set up another armor evolution or just try to go up the chain. So I think this is a pretty decent card to be running for those abilities alone. He does have a lower play cost than we saw with Ragermon being a play cost of 4, which isn't the worst thing in the world, so if you just need to hard slam the card just to get a 2 color condition on the field, then this is looking to be a pretty good card for that. Next up, we have Flame Dramon. So Flame Dramon is another armor evolution. He digivolves for three off of red or a Vmon for two. So again, there's that like whole balancing act. Otherwise, I think like two color cards are very dangerous to be interacting with. Otherwise, if they just made them like normal Digimon. So I do like uh, what they're doing here. He also has the armor release condition and he even has a win attacking ability where this Digimon gains 3000 DP for the turn. So when he's swinging, he's going to be swinging for 8,000 DP, which is just really aggressive. And that's not necessarily an unheard of thing for a red card to be doing, but the fact that we do have a solid resilience at level 4 that could uh, actually have some decent uh, aggression, combined with uh, all of the possibilities that, that Vmon can do, make this card just very, very strong to be running, and he could possibly be used and create some very powerful aggro-style decks.
Next up, uh, we have Magnemon. So Magnemon is uh, one of the royal knights that we were missing. I thought for sure they would make a mono blue version of him. Well, I mean, they still could make a mono blue version of him, but the fact that he's split between blue-yellow is not that surprising, and he's actually a pretty decent Digimon in his own right. He's a little bit more expensive in terms of his evolution costs than some of the other level 4s, but that's just because he's a very powerful level 4 to be working with that could be as strong as some level 5s and level 6s. So what this card is doing is he could evo off of it yellow or blue for 4, or you could digivolve him off of a Vmon for 3. So no matter which way you spin it, he's going to be a little bit more on the expensive side compared to other level 4s, but he does have the blocker ability native to him. He also has the armor release a condition, so that way you could block and then armor release, uh, go back to the Vmon, then digivolve into something else. So that's just very powerful synergy already. And then on top of all of that, he does have a nice when digivolving ability where you get to unsuspend this Digimon. And then for each card with armor in its stage in your trash, then this Digimon gains plus 2000 DP until the end of the opponent's next turn. So it only takes it two armor Digimon to be in your trash in order for this card to hit 11,000. DP, which is pretty strong. The unsuspend ability could be used both offensively and defensively. So if you have, let's just say, the jamming Vmon, then you could swing with the jamming Vmon, break a security, then digivolve into the Magnemon and unsuspend himself, and then you could either keep him unsuspended to use as a blocker or swing with uh, as a solid level four to swing with. So there's just a lot of flexibility on how you could use him. And yellow and blue already does have a little bit of uh, support with each other. So who knows what else is going to come in the set that could potentially help this color combination out. So I do think that Magnemon, while he is a little bit expensive and he does seem slightly underwhelming, he's probably a better card than what we're giving him credit for. Next up, we have Sylphimon. So Sylphimon is a level 5 Jagras Digimon. It could Digivolve off of level 4 red or yellow Digimon. It has some pretty solid stats at being at 8,000 DP, and then it has the DNA Digivolution ability as well, where you could uh, use a uh, red level 4 and a yellow level 4 to make its evolution cost 0, and then stack the Digimon uh, underneath him. And then the important thing is to note that this is actually counting as a new Digimon, so any buffs or debuffs uh, won't carry over, but uh, that could come with its own pros and cons as well. And then on top of that, uh, this Digimon also has a when digivolving ability where one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 5,000 DP for the turn, which is pretty decent level of removal. And then on top of that, uh, if this card uh, DNA digivolved, then you could just delete one of the opponent's Digimon with 5,000 DP or less. So you could use this to delete potentially two uh, Digimon that have 5,000 DP or less, or you could stack this up to minus 5,000 and delete... Uh, the Digimon if it's 5,000 or less, allowing you to delete a wide variety of different targets. So I do like what this card is doing, and I think this card is actually pretty powerful, especially since it's also a two-color card, and we already do have a uh, red-yellow synergy. So who knows uh, how good this card is actually going to be in the long run, but it also has a nice inheritable ability on top of its uh, native abilities, where it's a win attacking ability, you get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon with 5000 DP or less. So that again is just really really powerful because there are just a lot of uh, very strong Digimon that uh, you want to be using that are 5000 DP or less. Let's just say the Tempo Efficient Blockers as an example. So the fact that uh, our Megas could delete those uh, blockers with this inheritable ability just makes this card even stronger. So I do think this is going to be a very strong card to be using, and I'm excited to see what they're going to do to support this card in the set. Next up, we have Imperial German Fighter Mode. So Imperial German Fighter Mode is finally making his appearance. It only took like, what, five sets in a starter deck since we first saw Imperial German. So we finally get a fighter mode in the game. Who knows, eventually we might get Paladin mode as either a side evolution or a level 7. But regardless, uh, this is just a really nice card to see in the game because a lot of people were anticipating him. So what this card is doing is he has uh, some pretty decent stats. He's a little bit on the expensive side, evoing for 5, but he does have uh, 13,000 DP and can evo off of blue or green. So that's already pretty strong considering we already know usually when we see an evolution cost of 5, there's usually a caveat with it to be able to reduce it to make it a more playable card, and he can digivolve off of one of our Dragon Mode cards for two. 
So uh, if we do already just have a uh, dragon mode on the field, then we could use our dragon modes to evolve into a fighter mode. And that just gives extra utility to our dragon modes. And we do have lots of different dragon modes that we could think about utilizing in the game already to make some very interesting and different uh, Imperial Dramon decks. And then on top of that, uh, this card has two other abilities of his own. He has a when digivolving ability and a when attacking ability. His when digivolving ability states that, that we get a return one of the opponent's uh, Digimon with 10,000 DP or less to their hand, so it's just a solid bounce effect removal ability to have. I wish the DP requirement was a little bit higher, but being able to return your average Mega is probably something they didn't want, and uh, this could return weaker Megas and below. And then on top of that, uh, his when attacking ability is also pretty decent, where it's a once per turn. If this Digimon has a blue uh, Digivolution source underneath him, then you get to unsuspend one of your Digimon. Could be this, could be a different Digimon. And then if this Digimon has a green Digivolution source underneath him, then you get to suspend one of the opponent's Digimon. So it's just your very classic Imperial Digimon thing, where it's taking both aspects of blue and green and fusing them together to uh, make something very, very powerful. So being able to unsuspend any of your Digimon is just really strong because it allows you to get an extra attack in, or you could use it defensively to make your Digimon not be able to be attacked into. And then on top of that, uh, being able to suspend one of the opponent's Digimon down could help uh, bypass blockers, or it could help uh, act as some solid control elements to suspend their Digimon so that way you could attack into it. So I do like what this card is doing, and I think he's going to be a very fun and exciting card to be playing around with. Next up, we got a new Duo Tamer. So this is the Duo Tamer of Davis and Ken. So this Duo Tamer is a really powerful Duo Tamer just because it is a two-color Tamer. So that's the first time we've seen a two-color Tamer in the game. And on top of which, both of its abilities are absolutely insane. So at the start of your turn, if you have a blue Digimon in play, you get to gain one memory, and if you have a green Digimon in play, then you get to gain one memory. So if you have a blue and a green Digimon, or a card that counts as both, you'll be gaining two memory for essentially nothing. So that's just really, really strong because it's a very easy way to gain memory compared to some of the other tamers that, that we have outside of memory fixing tamers generically putting us to three. So if we do have a generic memory fixing tamer, then this combos with that will allow us to gain even more memory to make even more powerful plays possible and it also has a nice secondary ability where when your Digimon digivolves into a Digimon that has two or more colors, you may suspend this tamer to unsuspend that Digimon. So that's just really powerful because, again, you could use that type of ability offensively and defensively. You could use it offensively to swing, digivolve, unsuspend, swing again, or defensively to uh, swing, digivolve, unsuspend, so that way it's safe. So I do think this is going to be a very powerful duo tamer to be playing, and if you are in this color combination, then this is so far looking to be a staple card that you want to be using. Next, we have the promo version of Angoramon. So this is a promo to help advertise the Ghost Games anime, and this card, while it's very basic, it's still pretty decent, where it gives it the nice inheritable ability of when attacking once per turn. If you have a Ruri out, then you get to gain one memory. So on attack, just gaining a memory is still pretty decent. You do have to have the Tamer out, so we'll see later in the video what the Tamer is doing to interact with this card to make this card even better as just a generic inheritable to be using. And then on top of that, we also have a promo version of Jellymon that is also going to be supporting the anime and kind of acting as like a little advertisement for it where it also has a nice set inheritable ability, where when attacking once per turn, if you have a Kiyoshiro in play, then you get to draw one card. So again, just another very generic ability to have that interacts with uh, her tamer, where we just get to draw a card. That's something Blue already likes to do. So I do think this is just another generically decent inheritable ability to be using. Next, we have the promo Ruri Tamer. So she is a three cost green tamer and she has the native ability where during your turn, when your Digimon with Angoramon is in a Digivolution source attacks, then you may suspend this tamer to give that Digimon plus 3000 DP. So for just having the Angoramon underneath, we already know that 
and Goromon's gonna gain us a memory, and now with Rui, it'll also gain plus 3,000 DP, which is just a pretty decent generic combo to be playing in really any green deck. I don't know if most green decks actually have the space to run something like this, but it's still nice to have uh, these tools uh, to think about it, just because it does uh, expand uh, what green could be doing and what green can be playing around with. And then we also have the Kiroshiro promo, where the Kiroshiro promo has the same play cost, except instead of green, it's in blue, and it has the ability where during your turn, when your Digimon with Jellymon in its Digivolution source attacks, then we get to suspend this tamer to give the jamming ability. So I actually think this is a really good ability, just because we already have lots of cards that could interact and benefit from having jamming. So I think that having this basically extend your high levels, be able to give your high level Digimon the jamming ability could make a lot more Digimon a lot more playable. So the first thing that comes to my mind is something like an All Force uh, Vidramon deck could actually benefit from this card just because we do have a way to suspend our tamer. We do have a way to give them jamming. So uh, we could run some slightly different cards in the deck to make a very powerful deck happen. So that's just one example off the top of my head. And I think that this is going to be probably a more played uh, combination of cards just because drawing cards and gaining jamming are two very generically good things that you want to be doing. Hopping back over to BT08, we have a new hero card. So uh, the hero is a four-costed tamer. He is your classic memory fixing tamer. This is like Red's third one, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Red still seems to be lacking a duo tamer for whatever reason, but I digress. This card is still pretty decent uh, just because he is interacting with Gamamons, and we have lots of Gamamons to be playing around with. So he has uh, the nice ability where during your turn, when your Digimon with Gamamon in its name uh, or your level 5 or above Digimon attacks, then you may suspend this Tamer to give one of your Digimon plus 2000 DP. So we saw on one of the Gamamons before that as long as we have a Tamer in play, he could attack it into uh, the opponent's unsuspended Digimon. This card also plays around with that by giving him some extra DP to be playing around with, so he could actually hit really hard into some of the opponent's unsuspended Digimon as a rookie. So I think Think that's already pretty good on top of the fact that it's also just a generic way to uh, have a team or suspend for something like shine Greymon if you're really still playing around with that card to just give them some extra dp and it's just another way for all of your level five or above uh, digimon to just gain extra dp so i think he's a pretty solid uh, generic memory fixing tamer to be playing with as a result compared to some of the other tamers that we have granted i still do think ty is the best one just because gaining the extra security attack plus for having a nice large stack could just be that important to help push the level of aggression that we need because of all of the extra power that all of these new cards are providing but uh just having a good plan b just as a, another card in case you don't have access to the red tie is still nice to have Next up, we have a Battle Gamamon. So Battle Gamamon is a very basic card. He is a Gamamon to be interacting with Hero and the whole Gamamon line. He does have 6,000 DP, Evos for two, and he has the nice win digivolving ability of Blitz. So you could play like this Gamamon Shoutmon deck because he does have the Blitz ability and Shoutmon already is interacting with Blitz. And the fact that we could use our Tamers in some very powerful ways to do lots of exciting things just means that there's lots of depth and diversity diversity to how we could run not only just this card, but some of the older cards as well, because it's reusing certain mechanics to just flesh out what the possibility of that mechanic can do. So I do think while this card is a little bit on the basic side, it's supposed to interact with the Gamamon that we saw earlier in the video, where we play the hero get to draw a card, and then we get to also use its inheritable ability to be able to swing and delete uh, Digimon that are 3000 DP or less, with Hero being a good way to DP boost this card, so that way he can hit even higher numbers than he normally would be. So I do think this is a pretty decent and interesting card to be interacting with, even though it does seem a little bit basic. But that just goes to show you what some solid design can do, where something this basic could still be playable on multiple different levels because of everything that he's interacting with.
Oh, uh, I almost forgot, we also got a promo hero to be thinking about because we already had the promo Gamamon spoiled, but we didn't have the hero spoiled, so now we have a, a promo hero to be playing around with that's similar to the others, where during your turn, when uh, your Digimon with Gamamon in its uh, Digivolution source attacks, we may suspend this tamer to give uh, that Digimon security attack plus one. So again, it's just another really solid way to give security attack plus one. If we pair that up with the new hero and the new uh, Gamamon stuff, then we can make some very powerful and very aggressive uh, pushes relatively early as long as we have our tamer set up. So I do think that just having another generic way of gaining security attack plus with a whole bunch of different and decent Gamamons to be playing around with does make this card seem really, really desirable for a lot of red decks on a generic level. Again, I don't know in the grand scheme of things uh, how good these types of cards are going to be, just because if you are playing with a lot of baked-in synergy, then some of those synergies might just be better than what this card and its support is doing. But if you're not playing with those uh, baked-in synergies and you're trying to play something a little bit more generic, then I think these cards are really, really good just to try to help flush out what a deck it could do and what the deck is trying to do. Next, uh, we have a new option card. So this new option card is going to be uh, Static Force. So Static Force is a three-costed red option card with the main ability where you get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon with 4,000 DP or less. And then if we have a Digimon with two colors uh, in play or a Digimon with a Digimon that has two colors in its Digivolution source in play, then we get to delete uh, one of the opponent's uh, Digimon with 7,000 DP or less. So this is just a pretty solid removal card. Three for a removal card uh, isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world. Usually when we want removal we want it to be on we want it to be targeting high level digimon but with all of these new levels of aggression and interaction sometimes we do need a cheaper more efficient option card to hit those low levels so let's just say the armor digivolutions that we want to use this to try to pop the armor digivolution and then have an alternate means to delete that digimon so i don't necessarily think that uh, these low levels of removal is a bad thing it just helps flesh out what removal could do and red definitely has lots of removal cards that it could be using but nothing that's generally this efficient at trying to delete a potential Digimon for its cost. Most of the time uh, we see Red interacting with uh, options that cost 6 to delete 6,000 or less, so the fact that we have one that costs 3 that could delete one that's 4,000 or less or potentially 7,000 or less just makes it a really efficient card to be using. And then it has the nice security ability of activating its main effect, so it's just another decent card to run it just for its security ability as well, because it can act as some decent removal to try to potentially stop or stave off some of the opponent's aggression. Next up, we have a new version of Armadillomon. So Armadillomon, for all intents and purposes, is going to be acting very similar to the Hawkmon that we saw earlier in the video, where he could digivolve uh, off of uh, either of the eggs that he's going to be interacting with, so either blue or yellow eggs, which is pretty decent because it allows you to customize your eggs a little bit better. And then on top of that, uh, he is a yellow Digimon native, stats aren't anything too interesting, with the on-play ability to basically dig through the top four cards of your deck and add one two color card with yellow among it into your hand and then the rest go to the bottom. So again it's just very similar to Hawkmon and what we saw there. Next up we got a new version of Terriermon. This Terriermon is a uh, welcome and I think it's going to be a really fun card to be playing around with because it might actually mean we get a new version of uh, Gargamon, Mega Gargamon, and Rapidmon. So what this card is doing is it has the on play ability where you get to reveal the top five cards of your deck and add one card with Gargamon or Rapidmon in its name among them into your hand and then the rest go to the bottom. So uh, this is just another digger card and I think I like these digging cards more than just a raw search. I think raw search could be very dangerous to be playing around with and I do like the risk reward of these diggers and the fact that we could potentially see more Terriermon support is always welcome because Terriermon is a fan favorite Digimon for a lot of people. Next up we have the red Digitama from the set and it's going to be Gurimon. So Gurimon is going to be Gamamon's uh, pre-evolution and this card has the nice inheritable skill of when attacking once per turn. If this Digimon has 6,000 or more DP then we get to draw a card. 
So I think this is probably Red's best uh, Digitama that they have, acting as a more consistent draw engine than what we saw with Koromon back in BT05, where it needs to be a Greymon attacking. Granted, it still needs to be generally a higher level Digimon attacking, but we do have uh, some very powerful rookies that we could be playing around with, and ways of uh, just generically DP boosting our rookies uh, thanks to our tamers. So I think this is actually going to be a pretty decent uh, Digitama to be running, and could actually incentivize a more or red rookie rush style of deck to be played and i think this is going to be just a fantastic card to be using just because red already had a lack of card draw and now we're adding more card draw to it to make it more consistent of a color actually allowing it to be able to compete with some of the other colors that also have high levels of consistency so I've already said this before that I really do like what this card is doing, and I do like the fact that they're slowly uh, making all of the colors on equal footing. Now, if they could only take this lesson and apply it to black, because black still needs quite a bit of help, and the fact that we haven't seen any black cards isn't necessarily alarming, it's just really interesting to see what black is actually going to be doing in BT08. But as far as more starter deck cards, uh, we have uh, Ko Kabuterimon. So Kokabu Terimon is just going to act as the blocker that we saw with Ghostmon, where during the opponent's turn, if you have a blue Digimon in play, then this Digimon gains the blocker ability. So it's just a decent card at just acting as a low-level blocker. Again, I don't know if this card is going to see a whole lot of play, but it does have that blue-green synergy, and it is a low-level blocker in case they need it. But there is just that much low-level removal, as we already saw with just some of these spoilers, on top of everything else that we already have in the game, that I don't necessarily know how good this is going to be, but it's definitely a fun and interesting ability to have in the toolbox nonetheless. And then the last uh, new card that we got over this past week is going to be Hell Masquerade. So this is coming from the Imperial German starter deck, and it's going to be the alternate option for the starter deck. It is acting as a DP boost option, where it's just a really efficient option to play because it costs one, with the main ability where one of your Digimon gets a plus 2000 DP for the turn. Then if we have a blue Digimon in play, then one of our Digimon gains the piercing ability. So piercing is already pretty decent. Imperial German already has different ways of playing around with the piercing ability, so I don't exactly know if he actually needs this card card. I guess it's mostly for the new Imperial German, but regardless, this is still just a decent uh, boost option to be playing around with, but again, I don't necessarily think uh, in the grand scheme of things, this card is going to see lots of play just because there are better options for us to be using with more and higher levels of impact. But it also has the security ability of being able to add itself to your hand, so if you are playing this, then that security is nice to have, so that way you could use it when you need it. But, oh boy, that was all of the spoilers that we got over the past week. That was quite a lot, and I'm actually super excited for the set. I was really worried about them doing two-color Digimon wrong, because two-color Digimon, if done wrong, could actually make colors kind of meaningless and irrelevant, but at least they're trying to do it at the start a little bit more tastefully, so that way they don't actually just ruin the whole game just on accident. So I do like the approaches that they're taking, and I'm still very cautious about two-color Digimon as a whole, but this does give me lots of hope and it does open up the doors to lots of deck building diversity and opportunities. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu, so giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there, and I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.